Welcome to Matt Bayeski YouTube channel. How are you doing today? <laughs> it's a beautiful day to talk about Moldavite. Moldavita! <laughs> hey, where's Superman? Give me some kryptonite. How are you doing, guys? Welcome. It's a beautiful day today. It's the 1st of November, I think. I have no idea. I think it is. Uh, the time is, I haven't moved the clocks back, so uh, I don't know what time it is, but it's a beautiful moment in life. Forget time, forget dates, just look at it. Well, I live on the Costa del Sol and uh, I'm looking out at palm trees. I'm looking out at a clear sky, no chemtrails. I'm looking out at, at pure uh, clouds and I'm feeling it. It's the, the energy is fabulous. I'm on a detox at the moment. I'm doing a parasite cleanse. Fabulous. Cleanse in and you can feel it. Today I've been asked to do uh, a talk and to go a little bit more into depth. Uh, with the 20 years I've been working with Moldavite on thousands of clients and um, you've asked me about the book, when's it coming out? The problem right now um, with my book is that because there's so many things going on right now, um, not only with the alignment of the stars but with uh, people's actions and um, the tyranny that's happening, Moldavite is um, becoming, um, in my humble opinion, one, one of the most important crystals in the world right now. I am um, working on another crystal. Um, I had it here for uh, months. And when I first started using this crystal, it had no effect to me. And I just, I used to apologize to people all the time. Right now, there's a change in effect in this crystal and I'm starting to feel it, but I'm not, not saying anything till I'm 100% sure and I'm working with my clients. Till that, that time happens, I will let you know how I feel and what's going on. This particular crystal is from Egypt. You probably already know what I'm talking about. It is a type of uh, meteorite and um, it's a, a yellowy colored one. You already know what I'm talking about. There's been many a times I've said, look guys, I'm sorry, I didn't feel anything from it. I wanted to give it another go to see if I had any feelings from it right now. And um, it's interesting at the moment. Um, and a lot of crystals that I didn't really connect with, I'm just starting to right now. And there's a reason for that. The, there is definitely a frequency shift, not only in negativity in the way we are creating our, uh, let's say, AI technology frequency at the moment, if you've been uh, to a place where now your body is no longer in the flow as uh, nature intended. So there is a lot of things happening with fear, with lockdowns, and um, yeah, the alignment of stars, the 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 astrological charts, everything that's happening in, in the universe. Moldavite, I still think, is the number one. No matter what crystal I touch, Moldavite is still number one. And the reason why is because its frequency shifts as it's meant to with the alignment of the stars, with the alignment of energy. So, I mean, I can show you some Moldavites. I can talk talk to you about them. You've, you've seen plenty of my videos of how I explain how Moldavite works. One of the big questions that, because I haven't finished the book, uh, is a really big question and a lot of people um, ask me about it. And um, do I have the information and the, um, the, the knowledge and the wisdom to talk about this subject? Well, if I don't, I don't talk about it. So let me just explain something. The only reason why I share certain information with you is because of experience, not because of other people's books, because you can you can take all the books you want. It'll have, it will say nothing like I say, because my experience is not somebody else's experience. So as a healer working with thousands of clients day in, day out, for all those years, you get to understand certain patterns, you get to see certain things, not always, not always. But one thing you do know is that with a crystal, it has an effect on you like nobody else. And that kind of blows out of the window all books that are created. And it's true. What you can, however, do with a crystal is you can add memory into it. And if you can target that, that precise energy yourself, which is bloody amazing if you can, then you can say, okay, this has memory and it helps with this. My method was placing the crystal on a client and then doing a healing session. And the energy that you pulled through, I noticed only through the work, not because of what I wanted to do or achieve, I saw it happening. 
after a healing session, somebody would get up from grief and feel better. So the crystal that I had in my hand, I found that the next client who came, who never came for a healing session, but came for a reading, I'd gift them that crystal and I'd realize that, wow, they've, been, they've received that crystal and that client who, will, who was lying down for a healing session for, for grief, this crystal now has gone into their hands to help them with grief. And they would ultimately say, Mark, that crystal you gave me, I, I feel so much better. So it wasn't, it isn't plucked out of thin air. This is, this was out of trial and error and, and working as you would see any scientist going into a, a, a lab, looking at a Petri dish and looking at the outcome. It's the same thing. It's just, I don't wear a white coat and I don't have a Petri dish. I wear silly tops and I work with clients and crystals. So getting back to the Moldavite book, one of the biggest questions asked of me is where did Moldavite come from? So I'm gonna go through um, my decade and a half of working with Moldavite and coming to this conclusion. So this is kind of like something that I've never shared with you before in truth. I don't think I've really um, emphasized it. I haven't gone into detail. So let's talk about it, shall we? Because it's a fascinating topic and somewhat controversial in my opinion. My first ever client who came to me and I placed a piece of Moldavite on them started to um, experience something that I have never seen before. It wasn't the Moldavite flush, it wasn't the palpitations, it was irregular um, breathing. It was, it was unusual. Now you can get some people who breathe like this, but this was an unusual, forceful, and, and very profound in energy. So yes, I've had clients who've fallen asleep and they breathe similar to this, but not many, but some. And it's a, a kind of blowing from the mouth. <sighs> But this one was longer and more profound. Now, this was the beginning of the understanding of Moldavite. So when this happened, I found that fascinating. But from there, I realized that from that client and the others that came to me over the years, that that was kind of like um, my acknowledgement of what was about to occur. And that is what I have, have called the Moldavite language. And what happens is your client starts to speak, murmur, in uh, what I call gobbledygook. Now, I've slept with um, my partner who used to talk in their sleep. It's not the same. I've studied different kinds of languages. I've uh, listened to thousands upon thousands of um, uh, sounds and um, ancient speakings and and nothing sounds quite like this. It's very difficult to describe and it's, it's a struggle because there are no words to put into context what, what this, this language is. But suffice to say, it's a language. It is. Now, I've done many a times gone up to the ear trying to hear it. And it is familiar now to me. So that was fascinating. And you'll probably ask, what did the client feel when they got up? Most of the time, nothing. Most of the time, they didn't know where they were or what had happened. They were in a daze. It took them about five to 15 minutes to wake up properly, to come back to themselves. So they were off, they were gone. Okay, whether you call it astral travel, whatever you wanna call it, they were gone. They, they were not in their, their body per se. And these words, what were coming out were were fascinating, it was blowing me away. So it was like the Moldavite was, was speaking through this body suit. Um, yeah, fascinating. It's like plugging somebody into a, a, a diagnostic machine and it, it print out through the mouth. This is what it feels like. It's actually quite, it was actually quite a little bit nerve wracking at the beginning. This is weird. And with, with a touch of, ooh, what is this, you know? But you get used to it. Now, how many times has that happened? A handful of times. So it's not something that occurs all the time. So you can understand if I'm healing people and, and the tens of thousands of people who came to me, 
only a handful experienced it with Moldavite on them, then you can see how rare this is and how challenging it is for me to talk about it without you saying this guy's a nutter, which is fine, I'm used to it. But it happened and it's the truth. So that doesn't actually support this, this um, controversial subject that I'm about to tell you where I believe this Moldavite came from. And there are a lot of people who talk about Moldavite where it came from. A lot of people talk about starships that blew up and all that. But for me, I didn't, I wanted to know all of this myself. I didn't even know about the starship thing. Somebody told me a few months ago, but anyway. So from that point of view, that made sense. There's something here that is fascinating within this crystal. Where this language is, no idea. I listened to, you know, Hebrew, all lots of different uh, tribes, ancient um, uh, uh, past uh, speakings and nothing sounded quite like it. So, what happened next? With, within those five years that I really fully focused on Moldavite, working with most of my clients, there was something that was quite evident when I was going into um, the healing mode. And anybody who's a healer out there understands this mode. It's a point where you just feel in utter bliss. It's a moment where some people call Nirvana the highest vibration and and it's just it, it's it's no time no space but it's beautiful that's happened to me a few times with Moldavite and um, what I found was there was images that came through and I, I work on the the grounds of, of somebody who's a clairvoyant or a clairaudient they, they see and feel differently they hear differently I see images and I did from the first day I went to circle that I didn't even know I was in a circle. And I saw an image. And that image was of a man's face, old man with a white beard, white hair, laughing. And when we'd finished, the group told me we were healing one person who's got a white beard, white hair. So that's how my spiritual journey began, really. I found that fascinating. So I was attuned to the person that they were healing, which was fascinating. And the fact that he was laughing and the fact that they turned around and said, you know what, Matt, we were only talking about this yesterday. Um, and I'm like, what? For the first time in months, this man laughed. I mean, he's normally sad because he's ill in bed, but his granddaughter came around and blew bubbles in his face with this, these blowing bubbles. And, and they said, the fact that you've, you've said him, and you, they knew, they knew that I'd connected to it. Whereas me, I'm walking out the door thinking, what is this all about? This is weird, fascinating, but weird. And that's how my journey began. But from then on, when I used to sit with clients all over the world, whether they were A-listers, whether they were scientists, whether they were doctors, whether they were mums and dads, I would sit in front of them and place my hands over their hands and attune to them. And what would be given to me, not all the time, but a lot of the times what would be given to me is snippets of information within a, a, a jigsaw puzzle. So I see a picture and then another picture and I'd have to try and put the pieces together. Well, let me tell you, when Moldavite, when Moldavite was in my hands, when this was in my hands and I was holding it or it was on top of a client on their forehead, even if it was a little tiny sliver on, on top of their forehead and I was working on their energetic field, pulling in, this beautiful energy, I'd get snippets of, of images. And the only way I can describe it is of a world which was filled with love, harmony, peace, tranquility, um, the ability to attune to one another. The people that I saw were beings of part light, part see through bodies they moved at a at a, a floor rather than steps so it was more of a movement like this their faces were somewhat human like but more oval in shape and more beautiful but 
the way I saw it was see through. You could almost see through them and see see their entire body system, which was different from ours. It was more hollow and pure, but there was more light radiating from them. So they were more of a of I believe a species of beings of light rather than um, our skin. What I saw was no words, but um, I, I could feel and see the communication was evident. So there was no lying. You don't, you can't lie on this earth. It was high vibration. It was filled with with love, and the feeling that I attuned to was incredible. The world itself was not like a world like this. It was a different kind of energetic field. It almost felt like three dimensional and transparent and 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 honest. Everything was so pure in form. So I could go on and on and on and on about what I'd seen. And there were many times that I channel this very um, world. And I came to understand that something happened to the world, whether it imploded, whether it was its moment for that, 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 that whatever you call it, star or, or planet to, 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 to end its life, it was ended. And at that moment, it shattered through the, the stars and part of that beautiful energy memory of that planet came to this world as a meteorite and landed in Germany, in two places in Germany actually, because it splintered. And I've been to both places, to the craters, both craters. Um, at, at, at that point where it it landed and it, and it mixed in a certain way, well, when it lands, it creates an energy and then it, it's like water, bloop, and then the rest goes, whoosh, and it shoots out and it shoots out and it lands on the planet at certain places. Now, one thing that I have never mentioned and I don't wanna, but there's a, there's something, I, I better not say it because that's the best part of the book anyway. So it's in the ground, it's mixed with mother earth, it's mixed with all the, the, the minerals, with the water, uh, the earth, uh, the sand, and it creates this very unusual, beautiful Moldavite, which you can't see it properly unless I turn it like this, I guess. And, and when you look at it, it's, it's, it's divine, it's divine. Um, this is from uh, Besanice, and it's a hedgehog, and it's um, a very rare piece. And when you look at it underneath the microscope, there isn't a blemish, there isn't a mark, there isn't a, a, a chip. And this is what's called um, museum grade. So when, after the years that it's been created, and we take it out and we hold it, I believe that Moldavite holds a memory of the planet it came from. That is my truth. I am not here to say it's real, it's reality, it's fact. I'm here to say that if somebody was to ask me where this is from, I would tell them this because of my experience through the years I've worked with it. It might not resonate with you. It might be a starship. We might all say things in different ways because you might say, well, yes, it's a planet, but it's a starship. I don't know, but all I can share with you is my truth. That's why I believe Moldavite is different from any other tectite. It's different because it holds the energy and the frequency of, of such high vibration that was pure love. No anger, no fear. It just heals us. That's why when we hold it, we change our frequency. We start to get upset. We cry. We get frustrated because we're detoxing. We're clearing because of the, the love of the crystal and the power of that beautiful planet. The memory, the little bit of memory is still in there. And sometimes we can feel it. Now, here's the problem with all of this. Most Moldavite, that you buy is fake. 
so a lot of the times people get angry and say you're talking shit and I'm saying why because I feel nothing from it and the chances are and this is factual evidence the chances are you having a Moldavite that is genuine in your hand is probably about 50 50 if not more if not more so here we have it we've got a, a world of people all holding Moldavite and if there's a hundred people in a room 50 are going to say I don't know what you're talking about and that's not my fault that's the fault of of other countries who who are disgusting and and they cheat and we shouldn't buy from them but we do everything we have is from there and there's nothing we can do about it apart from sourcing making sure you buy from the correct source now we all know when we start to study moldavite that it's a little bit dodgy because there's a lot of dodgy stuff goes on there. Not many people will tell you about it. I'm probably one of very few who's open and honest. Why? Because I go there. The dodgy. It's dodgy. Because you, you can't dig it. It's illegal to dig. So it's dodgy already. People who are digging for it are, are breaking the law. I don't believe in the law anyway. The law's an ass. But just in that sense, people who are good and kind aren't going to be going digging for it, are they? because they don't want to break the law. So who are digging for it? Well, people who need the money because they're addicted or they, they've got a gambling habit or whatever. They need money. I've got no issues with that, but I'm saying that we've got a lot of issues with Moldavite. We've got a lot of issues. And those who are selling it, many of them, they couldn't give a damn about the energy of Moldavite. They, they have no idea. They, they, they only know because people like me talk about it. But they probably stood looking at it and they haven't got a clue, but they're excited because they know that this guy's talking about it. The price has just gone up another few euros or, or like now another three times more. And yes, you probably can see the frustration in me because I can't buy Moldavite anymore, even though my sources are amazing. Can't buy it. Why? Because everybody wants it. Everybody wants it. And you know what? There isn't that much. There's only a few feels here and there, and most of it, they reckon that five years ago, there should be no more Moldavite left anyway, in theory, for the amount that landed. So I've said this to you, and I'll say it again. I would say on the market now, if you ask me on Epsi, eBay, Amazon, all of these, uh, these sites, if you were to ask me how many on them sites are fake, I would say 90% and 10% are genuine. And that ain't my fault. That isn't my fault. So when you come to me and say, you're talking rubbish, this stuff doesn't work. It's probably because it's not Moldavite. A lot of the times I used to say, it's probably because you're not attuned to it. You're not working hard enough. But you know what? I've come to understand that most people selling Moldavite are cheeky and they're just buying it from you know where. And it's fake. So it is a challenge. It's a real challenge. Um, and I've been trying to look for something that works as well as Moldavite. And up till this moment, I can't find it. Brazilianite is a beautiful crystal and it's lovely, but even that's rare and becoming more expensive. It's ridiculous. I tried to buy some the other week. It's phenomenal price now. And you know, everything's by gram. And it's easy when it's by gram because now, oh, well, it's gone up now. The gram's gone up. Oh, well, that's easy for you, isn't it? And it's more expensive for us, you know? So it's sad, really, but that's the way it is. In Munich, one of my buyers that I used to buy from, I mean, it's gone from the, the, the little tiny pieces which you can get, or you used to be able to get, for five, six, seven euros a gram. It's gone up to 20 a gram. And these are like pieces that it's like, you know, they're just chipped and, and still beautiful. But yeah, it's just going crazy and now for this you can ask what you want for it now and banging my head against the wall thinking well you know all my staff are saying you're gonna have to put the price up on your website you're gonna have the, the, for me to buy a Bessonitz now not not the hedgehog but a Bessonitz a nice piece 90 a gram so that means that that if I go and buy that now it's more expensive 
than what I've got on my website. So it's gone crazy. However, it's still a beautiful crystal. It doesn't matter where and who picks it, it's still a beautiful crystal. And if you ever get a chance to own a piece, then hold on to it when it's genuine. Hold on to it unless it disappears. But that's another story. I wish you a lovely day, guys. I hope you enjoyed this 25-minute chat on Moldavite. I could talk to you literally for months about Moldavite and the power of Moldavite. But if you do, and I remember when I first saved up for a piece of Moldavite, and it was the most happiest moment of my life. Sometimes the best things in life are worth working for and um, waiting for. So good luck and um, enjoy Moldavite as much as I love working with them. Have a great day. I've got so much to do. Absolutely so much to do. And I've got so much to talk about. And it's nice because today is a bank holiday here and there's no noise. And that's why I was able to do a video today. Love you all. Have a great day, guys.